Welcome to Golden Gopher Basketball Media Day. I'm Mike Grimm along with Spencer Tollickson, the radio crew of Golden Gopher Basketball on the radio. And with us is senior Andre Hollins. That's right, senior Andre <laughs> Hollins. Uh, time flies, huh? Can you believe you're already uh, in your final year here? Yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, I was just reflecting on when I first stepped on this campus and how young I was and how wide-eyed I was, uh, you know. But, you know, I really look back on the years and it's truly been a it's, it's a blessing to really be a part of such a great university and a great program. You um, went through a new coach last year. So it's all, not like a freshman year over again, but you're learning a whole new system. How much more comfortable here in year two? Because I look back uh, early in your freshman year, you were yeah. trying to get used to it. Mm -hmm. By the end, you went on that great run in the NIT and then had just a super sophomore year. Yeah. Then you kind of had to reset. Mm -hmm. Are you hoping to now get yeah. into kind of having that same kind of run here in your yeah. last year? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, that's what I'm look, looking forward to do. Uh, you know, a lot more comfortable in Coach Patino's system. Uh, you know, I know what he expects. I know what he wants. Uh, you know, and I know how to play in this system, and I, and I like it a lot. Dre, how difficult was it last year to transition from the one to the two, and how is that going to relate to this season? Uh, it wasn't too much of a of a difficult transition because, you know, I mean, I, I, kind of all the guard spots, the one and the two, are they're interchange, interchangeable. It's just who brings the ball up. Sure. Uh, it, it wasn't that much of a difference, um, you know. And plus, I, I was playing the one uh, – for a, a good percentage of the season, too, right. when Dre was in foul trouble or Dre went out, so mm -hmm. I was the I was the um, the second string one. So you know, it, it wasn't that big of a difference. One too difficult. Sure. How how are you feeling? I know that ankle uh, certainly was nagging uh, for a while. You had you missed a couple of games. You came back and uh, gutted it out a few times uh, early. Yeah. Uh, what uh, are you back to full health with the ankle? Yeah, definitely. Uh, this summer, I I was in the training room uh, all summer with with my trainer Ben Fells, uh, doing a lot of uh, ankle er exercises. Uh, you know, uh, just trying. Just I, I finally got 100% healthy. I feel like I am 100% healthy now, and you know also. Um, just as a diet nutrition, I've been working with Sean Brown, our strength and conditioning coach, uh, getting my weight down. I'm, I'm focusing on getting down to 185. I'm like 188 right now. Nice. So, yeah, well, I, I think that's a, that goes into a, a big part of me, you know, feeling healthier, being lighter, putting less weight on the ankle. So. Dre, did you look at your game, your personal game last year, and think to yourself and assess what you needed to improve on the most this summer? Yeah, definitely. What it, was it, that? Defense. It was defense by far. Uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think I brought it like I should have defensively, even before my injury. Uh, I didn't think I had that, that mindset as sure. you're not scoring on me, and this year it's completely different. Now, was that more of like a, a, a mental change that had to occur as opposed to a physical change because when you talk about defense and rebounding it's so much of an attitude mm -hmm. is that you know just trying to get your your mindset right before the season start defensively yep you nailed it on the head it's all mental it's all a men mentality type thing you have to get after it. you have to really take pride in defense sure. and uh the best teams are the the, the teams you can't score on uh the, the ohio states the michigan states mm -hmm. Uh, that's why Aaron Kraft is such a such a great player because he took pride in his defense and you know you, that's what that's what uh, good players do. Sure. As you uh, have started now, what about three weeks into practice? Mm -hmm. um, what have you seen uh, from one personally your comfort level now in year two, and then two of the newcomers with a bunch of guys that are in the system as opposed to almost everybody last year, I guess except for Malik Smith, right? Yeah. Didn't know what the heck was going on to start. <laughs> yeah. how, how has that been different here to start year two early in, in, this, in the preseason practice? Uh, as far as my comfort level, uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable. Uh, I know, like I said, I know exactly what Coach Patino expects. Um, you know, also from a leadership standpoint, I know what he expects. And, you know, it's just, we just try, just try to bring it every day, bring, uh, try to bring the best out of myself every day so I can give the team my best. And, uh, as far as the the newcomers, I think they've they've come in and really gotten the system well. Especially like the freshmen, they come in from not really having a, a background, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit easier to them. And also the JUCO players, they've come in and been really really receptive to the system. And I think I think we're gelling well right now. You know, 
talking with a few guys before we came on the air here, and if you're again just joining us, we're at uh, Gopher Media Day for men's basketball. The uh, real season starts on November 14th against Louisville. We'll ask Andre Hollins about that here momentarily. But talking to a lot of the guys before we came on the, uh, on the program today, and they talked about the freshmen and the older guys working hard. Now, they, uh, Mo Walker in particular, said, yeah, we know we worked hard last year, but he goes, coach is more comfortable, and he's really now pushing us a <laughs> yeah. little more. Have you noticed the same? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, you know, kind of, I guess, the first year, nobody knew, knew what to expect. So, you know, it, you know, he didn't. we didn't know how good we could really be last year. And we ended up being a pretty darn good team. And this year, the expectations are higher. But the most important thing is that we're, we're trying to be better every day. I think that that was the biggest key as a team that we're, we're trying to do because at the end of the day, as long as we knew we brought our all, brought it every day on the, on the court, off the court, in the weight room, in the classroom, that you know we'd have nothing to hang our heads on. Mm -hmm. Dre, you've mentioned it twice now personally and then once about the team in terms of understanding Coach Patino's expectations for you personally this year. What are those expectations that he expects? For me personally? Yeah. I feel like uh, he he wants me to be the best player, one of the best players uh, in the in the Big Ten. Uh, you know, bring it every day. Like I said, get better every day, and also uh, from this team, be a, the best leader I can be. Sure. You know what I mean? Lead these guys because I've been through the fire. Uh, I know I know what it takes. So that's why that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to. You know, just be that vocal leader and also lead by example, by, you know, just bringing every day, being intense, being competitive. Mm -hmm. You have uh, a few more weeks before we get to that game in Puerto Rico, which is a, a, a certainly competitive way to start the year with a top 10 team in Louisville, and mm -hmm. then the season progresses from there. Um, between now and then, what would you like to see happen with this group in terms of continuing to progress? And then how eager are you guys just to start playing, getting into the season? Uh, what I'm looking most forward to is us getting more competitive, even more competitive, because it's they're already competitive practice. We had some great practices, uh, you know, and I want us to get get a little bit more tight, tight, just where get better defensively, because our offense is working really well now. We're clicking, we're gelling. Now I want to get that also on the defensive end, where in practice we don't know what's like, was it good offense or good defense? I want it to be like a confusion, because both of them are very good. So. You know, I think I think we have that capability of doing that because you know it's a great opportunity we'll have uh, to play in Puerto Rico and play against a team like Louisville. You guys have played some big games, including the Madison Square Garden and the such. Uh, this will certainly be on the big stage. Um, can you make some noise early? That, that, that's the plan. Uh, <laughs> but right now, we're, you know, we're worried about the three weeks, the three weeks we have left to practice. You know, just trying to get better every day. All right. Hey, good to see you. Good to Senior see you, Andre. Hollins. Yeah. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, down in Puerto Rico. <laughs> All right. See All you right. guys. Andre Thank you. Hollins. As uh, we continue our coverage, Joey King. I think uh, you can uh, you can give Joey your your uh, seat here. All right. And we'll let him uh, slide in as the Gophers media day for 2014-15 season is here at Williams Arena. I'm Mike Grimm along with Spencer Tollickson from Go for Radio and uh, from uh, Eastview High School, Egan, Minnesota, we have uh, Joey King who... Uh, Slim and trim, yes. Joey King. You been losing some weight? <laughs> Gained 15 pounds since last year. It's all muscle. Yeah, right? Muscle weighs more than fish. Yep. It's in different places now. You um, you became a very effective player. Well, you were you know you came out like a house of fire, scored 20 in your first game ever in the maroon and gold, uh, and then kind of plugged along, and then, boy, in the postseason Big Ten tournament, uh, into the NIT tournament, really uh, uh, came into your own. Uh, have you been able to take that momentum and confidence uh, into the summer and now into the fall? Yeah, definitely. Uh, having that great finish this season, uh, did a lot for me, uh, boosted my confidence as well as just made me want to work harder throughout the summer. And uh, all that hard work, I think, translates to me being a lot more confident going into this season and feeling like I can have success. Was there an area that you wanted to, to improve most with uh, this summer to bring into the year? Well, I mean, just being confident in just every aspect of the game on the court, uh, not being as hesitant with everything that I do. And I think that's the biggest step that I've taken is I feel like I have a lot more control over what I'm going to be doing on the court. And uh, I think that's the biggest step that I've taken. Joy, when you talk about confidence, uh, although the, the, the great finish that not only you personally had to the season last year, but also the team, what have you worked on this summer that's going to translate into confidence coming into next year? 
You know, just uh, as a team, just our bonding and everything that we've done as a whole, uh, I think has gotten everybody in a situation where they believe the whole team is confident, therefore, that they can have success as individuals. And because all of the hard work that each person has put in, we can have success as a team. And um, like I said before, I think just the effort and energy that they've put in this summer will translate to success going into this year. Your first year in the Big Ten, your second year as a college player last year, you're in the Missouri Valley, which is a very good basketball league. What did you learn in the Big Ten last year that maybe caught you by surprise, if anything, and how can you this year uh, go in maybe more prepared or feeling better? Well, I, I believe I was prepared last year, but I just didn't have the ta little intangibles and uh, things like that that would give me the success that I really wanted. And I think over the summer, I've worked really hard to just improve on get those short little things that I need uh, that really translate to success in the Big Ten because you can't make mistakes. You have to bring it every single night. And I think that's what we're all really working to do. We want to clean up every small little thing that, so that we don't have slip-ups and stuff like that during the Big Ten season. Joe, when you talk about expectations uh, for next year, I'm certainly not going to ask you to put a number on wins or losses for the season, but one thing that Andre Hollins addressed was uh, some of the expectations that Coach Patino and, and he have sat down and talked about. Have you had that conversation with Coach yet? Yeah, I mean, we, we have our individual and team meetings with Coach, and uh, just what he, expect, what he expects from us every day and what he wants us to bring to the team. And so far for me, it's just been practices and what he wants to see from me, uh, whether it's me individually or how I make efforts to lead the team. And uh, I think just from him, he just really wants me to compete every single day. And that's what he really looks to get out of me the most. Joey King, thank you. Good to see you, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in Puerto Rico as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, right. Joey. Joey King, uh, the big uh, four uh, starting uh, power forward for this Golden Gopher basketball team, and uh, we'll bring in one of the seniors. We've already talked with Andre Hollins, and now Mo Walker out of Scarborough, Ontario, Canada, and uh, we were just talking with Andre about it being his senior year. It's also your senior year, but uh, you you got an extra year, so this is a fifth year. So you you're like the old man here, huh? You're you're uh, this is old old hat for you, media yeah, day. Yeah, big man on campus, so wanna <laughs> kind of an old old oldest player on the team. I'm I'm pretty sure, and uh, yeah, hopefully I can bring some of that you know experience and professional leadership to this team. You uh, became a force offensively down low. Uh, really pretty consistently but particularly you think of the Ohio State game the Wisconsin game and certainly a few others from a year ago um, how uh, determined are you to be a factor every night in the paint now for this coming season I'm pretty determined you know I, I want to be more consistent this year as, as opposed to last year you know play at the highest level throughout the whole season uh, hopefully that translates into a great season for us as a team Mo, you talk about being consistent what does that take to come and bring it every you know night in night out I think it's just a mindset, you know, a mentality. Uh, you just got to come in prepared every day, you know. It starts in practice, and, you know, if I come into practice every day, hopefully that translates over to the games, and I can bring it every day. As you um, come forward, you, you and uh, Elliot last year combined for that five position, and you guys will certainly share some time this year as well. What... Um uh, and, and I know it's a friendly competition. You guys mm -hmm. certainly push each other, and I know it, I'm sure there are times, that just like everything else, uh, when you're when you're competing, you, you get uh, uh, it gets to be highly competitive. Are you pushing? I mean, you want the starting job, you want to take that job, but you also want to push each other, right? Yeah, definitely, you want to push each other. Um, like Coach said, Coach probably already told you guys it's a toss up between who starts between me and Elliot. But uh, you know, I think uh, every day, you know, if, if we just compete and push push each other, you know, it'll bring the best out of both of us. And I'm sure whoever Coach decides to throw in that starting lineup will, will produce. When you and Spencer can talk to this too. I mean, you guys are uh, as a team very good friends. And mm -hmm. but even friends, I mean, it's like your brothers. You know, you'll fight mm -hmm. sometimes. What's what have you? Uh, what's what's the maddest you've ever been at Elliot? And what's the maddest he's ever been at you at some point in the practice? I mean, if you guys. Uh, spoken a few words or a time or two and you go bang uh, back and forth no i don't usually get into it with my teammates <laughs> but uh you know, i can recall a few times you know catching the elbow here and there and you know being pretty pissed off about it but, <laughs> you know i just i just makes me play a little harder and you know i want to i want to one-up him every time he does something great and i know every time i do something great he wants to you know one-up me so it's healthy competition and it happens so often that I mean, we see each other so often that you know we can never Hold, hold it against each other or like stay mad at each other. See, when Spencer played, everybody wanted to punch him, all of his teammates, right? <laughs> Even my counterpart here wants to, every once in a while. 
Uh, Mo, what did you work on this uh, this off season? I know it's the cliche that the most important time of year yeah. is indeed the off season for basketball. It's of course the summer, but uh, what have you been up to? You look to be in fantastic shape again this season. Uh, what have you been up to? I uh, just spent a lot more time on the court, you know, uh, brushing up on my skills. Uh, last season, I spent a lot more time on the treadmill and on the elliptical. You know, this season, a lot more time on the court. You know, working on my game, a lot more time in the weight room, getting stronger. So. That's pretty much what I've done this offseason. I want to ask you specifics about a couple of newcomers that certainly that you've gone up against here early in practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the six foot 11 inch uh, kid from Mali, Bakari Kanote. Kanate. Uh, what, yep. uh, what can you tell us uh, about him and what kind of player can uh, Gopher fans expect? Uh, well, first of all, he's a great guy, you know, probably re- the most polite guy you, you'll ever meet, you know, really friendly. Um, on the court, you know, he has a great game to him, a great mid range jump shot. Uh, you know, he's a really aggressive on on the boards, really gets after it. Um, you know, he's just raw talent. You know, he's, he's still learning. He has, he has a lot to learn, but he's catching on really quickly, and, and it's really showing in practice. And then the other big I wanted to ask you about is Josh Martin, uh, the freshman out of the Seattle area. What, uh, what What's his game look like? Uh, stretch four, he's a pretty good shooter, um, great athlete. You know, uh, again, on the, on the boards, you know, he really gets after it. Um, I know there's been a few practices. He grabbed some offensive rebounds over my back and had a couple <laughs> tip dunks. And you know he's just really aggressive player and uh, plays hard every every possess- every possession. And he's uh he's gonna be great. They both have a lot of years under their belt to uh, really learn and improve. So they'll both be great players. Mo, just to finish up here on the on the newcomers, who do you feel is gonna make the biggest impact um, in terms of the newcomers this season? Um, I mean, all the guys really work pretty hard. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, everybody, every one of you guys shocked somebody somehow. Um, I think Carlos Morris, you know, is really great offensively and defensively. Like I said, Bakari really gets after it. Josh, you know, Nate, they're all really talented players. And uh, uh, hopefully, you I mean, those guys can contribute early in the season and, and contribute for the rest of the years throughout here, here at Minnesota. All right, very good. We appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to let Elliot uh, slide into the chair here. We'll let you have the rest of the day off. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you. Maurice Walker with us here on Gopher Basketball Media Day. And, again, if you just joined us, I'm Mike Grimm along with Spencer Tollickson from the Gopher Radio Network. And Elliot Eliason, another uh, one of those fifth-year seniors. We were just uh, joking with, with um, <laughs> old, old Walker. No, you guys are the old no. men now. You, it wasn't that long ago you were the young pups, and now you guys are showing the young pups the ropes, right? Can't believe it, you know. You uh, it's really cliche, but here it is already. Uh, feel like we've been here forever, and or we just started. I don't know. It's been it's been great. <laughs> it depends on the day, right? Depends on the day. Right, depends right. on the day. <laughs> yeah. I have to hard practice. My body says I'm like 100 years old. So we just uh, talked with Mo, and he talked about that you guys have uh, a really good relationship. A good. Uh, you both are fighting for mm-hmm. a spot. You. I mean. You're both going to play. Yeah. Somebody's got to start, and you both want to, certainly, but that it's been a, a, a pretty fr- – he even said that he doesn't even get mad at you when you throw an elbow at, 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 at him. So <laughs> That's, uh, that's changed. No. <laughs> um, uh, but, but how is that competition uh, with you guys? And uh, you guys – the games really kind of complement each other. No, they, they really do, and he, he's, he's 100% right. I mean, it's been a really friendly – I mean, a friendly competition in the sense that we, uh, you know, we can work super hard against each other, be highly competitive, you know, take it at each other, and then when we get off the court, there's no hard feelings ever. Um, you know, we're still good friends. Everything's good. We know that we're trying to get each other better, and we want to, you know, we want to win. That's our whole goal, and it's about the team, and, you know, that's awesome. It speaks to, you know, his character and what a great guy he is. I got to know in terms of competition, practice-wise, what two guys go the hardest at each other? Oof. Well, you and Mo? I mean, I think me and Mo because, you know, we're every day we're going to be against each other. It's you, you know, two we every know that. Open we know gym, that every you're day. Never on the same team. Yeah, never. We right. always are picking the team, so it's always going to be him against each other. So I think it's probably us two, honestly. Right. Uh, I mean, we're the only ones that really go against each other every day. Like DeAndre might not be guarding Andre every day, but me and him are we're going to be playing <laughs> against each other. So it's <laughs> I don't know if it gets. We haven't been sick of each other yet, but I know we're pretty happy when we get to play other sure. opponents. Sure. Uh, difference now between last year at this time, learning the new system, right. uh, when no one knew it really, except for Malik Smith, and now everyone, at least everyone that returns, uh, <laughs> whether uh, with everybody back now uh, from from last year, teaching the newcomers, uh, you got a better idea, feel more comfortable from a year ago. Oh, definitely. You know, last year we had to take the whole summer and just kind of focus on so many teaching points that we didn't get to be as competitive or up tempo while in practice and this year we're able to you know get after it for real and um, right away and I think that helps these guys and new guys by learning by doing so much quicker um, 
So, I mean, that's been helping us just have really competitive practices and, you know, working really hard, and that's huge, especially this early. We still have three weeks for our first game, so. Dre had mentioned that he and Coach Patino had sat down and talked about um, his individual expectations for mm -hmm. this season. Have you had a chance to have that conversation with Coach yet? I haven't had that conversation with the Coach yet, but I'm not – I'm kind of more of the, you know, train of thought. If I need to be all about the team this year kind of deal. I mean, I, I'm just really focused on us winning as many games we have to do. And I think I need to talk to coaches just how can I do that for this team? And I haven't had that opportunity yet. Um, but that's, like I said, this whole conversation we sure. have to have. But no, I just, we're just here to win, you know, whatever we can do. Your, uh, one of your main functions certainly is as rim protector, especially in this full court press. And you uh, were amongst the best seasons ever in school history with block shots. Uh, nice. what, um, what, what kind of things defensively did you work on to even up that game maybe this year? And mm -hmm. how anxious are you to defend the paint again? You know, I love that. You know, that's my favorite thing to do is block shots, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I mean, it's just all about timing with me because I'm not, you know, a super athlete. I'm not going to jump out of the gym and block a shot. It's all about timing, you know, coming off, uh, picking your spots, come off the weak side and block a shot when you, you know, defender has someone, one of our guys has a, you know, offensive player pinned up or, you know, just helping, you know, the guards out when someone breaks play in the press. So, really excited. I uh, didn't know I had that great of a season, but well, let's have another one. It's one know. of the all-time greats. Yeah, we'll, awesome. uh, we'll look forward to seeing it again. Thank you, sir. Appreciate no it. Thanks all right, for having Elliot. Me. Elliot Eliason with us here on yeah. Media Day Live 2014-15 as the uh, Gophers get set. A couple, uh, I guess, three weeks into preseason workouts, yeah. and it's an interesting. Um, a year ago, they started where the NCAA gave, gave uh, each team 40 or 42 days to practice 30 times before the first game. So it's a little spread out more than it used to be. And um, that's, of course, before that uh, big trip in Puerto Rico. We have another senior on this team, year two in the program, uh, DeAndre Matthew, the point guard, who last year was the team MVP and uh, had a great uh, offseason. We were just chatting a little bit. You had a, a double duty offseason, one, uh, getting better as a, as a basketball player, a Big Ten player for the Gophers, and uh, two, uh, you uh, became a father. Uh, take, take us through how that has changed uh, your life. Um, becoming a father is, is really cool. Uh, my son's my son's three months now. He's he's growing pretty fast, and, I mean, it's just it's fun. It's a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I thought it would be a lot more changing diapers and <laughs> a lot of crying, but he's um, – He's doing a good job of just being, I guess, being a good baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's always easier, certainly, that's <laughs> for sure. Um, your game, uh, so so you became a father, but now you also worked on your game. Uh, what kind of things did you work on in the offseason? Um, I tried to work on my decision-making um, by just watching film and things like that, and I really worked on my jump shot as far as shooting more shots to give me confidence to shoot them in the game and in different situations. You talk about shooting more shots last year, 22 of 45, 49% uh, from three. Do you see yourself taking more threes this year? Um, yes, sir, if if I have to. But if not, then uh, I'll settle for 45 threes <laughs> if, <Sure. laughs> if that's what it takes. Uh, you, um, Your game certainly is getting to the rim and either advancing the shot or passing. And uh, when you talk about decision-making, is that part of what you're talking about? To Am I shooting, am I finishing, or am I passing? And, yeah, and, and, when, and how do you handle that? Yeah, I, um, as far as when to attack, when to shoot, when to pass, things like that. Um, different situations I was in last year where I probably made the wrong play. I try to look back and try to, if that situation happens again, hopefully this time make the better play. And um, that's really what the decision decision-making factor came down to watching film like interior pass and I really struggled with last year because guys were longer than I expected them to be so I'm learning the bounce pass instead of chest pass in the lane lob pass sometimes just different things I'll try to work on and try to watch in film this summer year two for not only you but of course the whole team with with coach Patino it seems to me that you and coach certainly have an interesting relationship being that it's the second year now how has that relationship morphed or changed um he's not he's not screaming at me as much as he did last year <laughs> last year he was <laughs> it's like he was screaming at me a lot and I'm, I'm pretty sure the fans seen him screaming at me a lot but it's more of uh him just watching me like helping me more of a teaching now it was teaching last year but it's a different tone of teaching not as much screaming as it was last year he's just being um, he's more of a 
a friendly guy now to me than he was <laughs> last year. Andre was Holland's making year. a guest appearance behind the camera yeah, this yeah. time. Giving Andre's you always movie. smiling. Look, look he, <laughs> he goes smiling right now. He's that's got all the he million does. dollar smile, that's for sure. Ain't I asked uh, Mo about the two newcomers that were big, so I want to ask you about the two newcomers that are guards. What can you tell us first about Nate Mason? What kind of player can Gopher fans expect? What have you seen from him? Um, he's 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 good. He's going to be good for him the next few years. You wouldn't think he was a freshman just by seeing him in practice. Um, he came right into the uh, to the program, ready, ready to attack. He's he's not had a fresher moment yet. I don't think. What kind of player is he? A little like you, likes to penetrate. Um, he likes to penetrate. He he really has the mid range jump shot down pack, and he's a he's a better shooter than I expected. And then Carlos Morris is more of an off guard, not a, not necessarily a point guard. What uh, what kind of player is he? Um, he's he's smooth. He's he's Austin Hollins, but more of an attack than Austin Hollins. He doesn't probably don't shoot it as well as Austin. Just a, probably shoots a little less than Austin, but he's more of a get to the rim guy than Austin. And he's he's creates his own shot more too. But he's he's really good, rangy. Um, he'll he'll surprise you and dunk on you sometimes. So I mean he's he's going to be really good for us too. Do we know how he got the nickname Squirrel? Um, actually he was my roommate. And I don't even know how he got the nickname. <laughs> just got to figure that out. <laughs> but um, I, I think he just said that was something his family just started calling him and it stuck with him ever since. Very good. Have you kind of taken on being a senior and especially the point guard in a true leadership role, have you taken on a, kind of a mentoring position for those two guys? Um, yes. Um, Squirrel spends a lot of time with me and on and off the court and Nate does too. We um, I try to teach him like different things and we have talks all the time about what the Big Ten is like and what to, what to look for in the season. I try to tell him like it's going to be tough but you'll get through it and I feel like I'll be more of a mentor once the season starts and we have a rough stretch or have a rough game or things like that. I can tell him I had rough stretches too last year and I mean it'll get better so things like sure. that is really what I've been mentoring. I got to get used to people referring to him as Squirrel. Squirrel? <laughs> I'm not used to that. I don't, even, I don't even call him Squirrel anymore. I call him Lowe's. So just call I'm lost by that. <laughs> right. um, I don't know if folks are watching on the internet if the if the zoom, but you've got a little uh, some stitches over here yeah. uh, on the left eye. That's a, that's a con a part of uh, one of those tough practices from Coach Patino. Oh yeah, practice has been real physical, real intense this uh, this year, a lot more than last year. Um, this actually happened last night, uh, yesterday's practice, and I got these stitches at like 9:45 at night. So I mean, it just who uh, who was the deliverer? Well, Joey King actually <laughs> caught me, but it was an accident. We were actually on the same team at the time during the scrimmage, so uh, I was just shocked that <laughs> I didn't know what happened. I just, I just looked, and guys were like, "Yo, you bleeding?" I'm like I'm bleeding. It's like, "Yeah, you're bleeding." And after that, it was the end of my practice. Time to get stitched <laughs> up. Now that that does talk a little though, or go toward uh, how competitive these uh, these workouts have been. Yeah, practice has been a lot more competitive than last year. Um, the intensity in practice has just been different. It's like a whole different intensity, a whole different, whole different competitiveness to this team than than before, and you can tell. Like coach, coach talks about it all the time. This this team is very very competitive and. You can tell mostly on the defensive end that we're really getting after it. All right, DeAndre, good to see you. Good luck. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you down in Puerto Rico. Thank you. All right, DeAndre Matthews, senior point guard, last year's team MVP with us here on Media Day Live 2014. And uh, we await the arrival of the head coach in year two here at Minnesota. Year three as a head coach, Richard Patino. I think... Uh, He's here, and he's uh, making his way this way. Um, and I keep saying, we'll see you in Puerto Rico. Actually, Spence, uh, you're going to you I don't know what I'm going to what do. Are you this is do? now my sixth season on the calls with you, and this will be the first time where you will not be calling the game. I know. I know. We've got uh, football games, so I'm staying back for that. And uh, I don't know how... I don't know how that's going to work. Coach, you think you can coach without uh, without having to worry about me in the post game interview? Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think <laughs> what be we have to do is give you on a, your mind, right? Your really cheesy catchphrases <laughs> that you do when people dunk and just have a big list of them. <laughs> just just give a Corbu uh, status. By the way, we'll be uh, doing the game, and we'll just yeah. give him the list. Whammy. And, and, uh, and just watch Whammy. what is that anchor man, and he'll get some of them from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how you doing? Uh, talking to these guys, it sounds like uh, you're working these guys pretty good. Do you do you, do you feel like you're uh, getting them? A good uh, workout getting them in shape the way you want to yeah I think so I mean you know it's it's kind of a, a it's obviously a different team because it feels like we got everybody back but we really don't mm -hmm. because we lost four guys and then we brought in five new ones and the four guys that we had um, were good players but they were they were really high character kids and we've got to replace that not that the new guys aren't but they've got to learn some of the intangible parts of just being a teammate and I think that's the biggest 
thing we're trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. Coach, a couple of guys have mentioned that uh, the intensity is a lot higher already from the whole season last year, already early this season. What's changed or what's been different? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's, um, I think it a lot to do with year two is, is we've got a lot of stuff already put in, and now maybe we can kind of tighten the screws a little bit. It does feel more intense um, for whatever reason. And I also think the newcomers that we brought in um, are faster, more athletic, uh, quicker and I think that has a little bit to do with it as well. Can you, uh, well, what would you say that you put in in terms of what you want to see your system so to speak last year percentage wise and how much closer are you maybe to where you want to be here in year two? Yeah I mean I, well I think more than anything we we played somewhat the way we wanted to play but and again I'm not knocking the old personnel but you know Otto's not a great athlete mm -hmm. I love Otto mm -hmm. uh, but he's not um, Mav wasn't a great athlete. Malik wasn't a great athlete. Austin was a better athlete. So that part of it's always tough. So much of what we do is the personnel will allow you to play a certain way. I mean, we were, I think we were top three or four in steals, uh, which was nice. Our field goal defense wasn't quite good enough for whatever reason, and we've got to improve that. Our offense, I thought, was pretty good. And, and uh, you know, I think more than anything, we've just got to refine all those things. That's what's really important. Mm -hmm. Coach, the biggest change in, in last year's team to the previous year's team that I thought was was certainly the style of play, the up and down and the speed. Now that you've been able to bring in these freshmen um, with the addition of the guys returning, do you finally feel like you're even closer to playing how you truly want to? I don't know. I mean, you know, it's it's – I think we've got to – there was moments where we were – I mean, we've also got to understand your opponent will dictate a lot of the way that you play, obviously. Um, and, like, you know, with Iowa, I mean, it was, that game was in the 90s, I think, last year when it was here. So a lot of it depends on the opponent. I think the, the biggest thing that we I really want to shore up is I would equate myself to a football coach. Stop with the penalties. Stop with the turnovers. Let's not beat ourselves. We had too many turnovers, I thought, last year. We fouled too much last year. I think once we correct a lot of those things, we're going to be a pretty tough team. When you uh, work on improving those kind of things, what's the? Uh, how do you do that in practice? I mean, there's not necessarily a drill that says don't turn the ball over, but what, what kind of – how do you emphasize Make them that? run. Yeah, over. I mean, I th that's always a challenge as a head coach is you want them to be comfortable on offense. You don't want them to be fearful of anything. Well – they don't intentionally turn the ball over um, when they're making a play, but we emphasize it a lot, certainly. Um, the other thing, too, is, is you've got to play hard defensively and aggressively without fouling. Um, so you try to teach them some techniques, um, but that certainly is a challenge because nobody means to turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. uh, but you point it out as much as possible. You emphasize as much as you possibly can, and, uh, you know, a healthy punishment every now and then doesn't hurt either. <laughs> you have a, a good battle, and I don't know if it's an important battle because they're both going to play at center, but uh, you have Elliot Elias and a Maurice Walker going, you know, toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe maybe for, well, for sure, somebody's going to start out of those two guys. Uh, how important is it to determine who a starter is, and uh, how, how do you see that battle, and how important are those two guys to what you want to do? Well, first thing is it's highly unimportant to me who starts that's that's you guys that right. constantly ask about it and i or if you're going to play them together trying right? to find the right answer to where you'll stop asking me about it but i still have not d done it yet um yeah i i really don't think it's going to matter with those two guys uh because they're they're not i don't think that one guy is ever going to totally separate themselves i just don't uh because a lot of things that mo doesn't bring elliot brings just naturally because of the type of player he is mm -hmm. and vice versa with mo um we're going to need them both to play significant minutes. Um, I don't know who would start. I think they're both having a very good preseason. Um, they've both gotten better, and they're going to continue to hopefully improve. Coach Andre Hollins said here uh, just a short time ago, and he talked about a conversation that you two had in terms of your expectations of him this year. How does he take that step forward to really becoming the true scoring threat as well as he talked about you pointed out that he needs to become a better defender. In your mind, how does that happen? He certainly needs to become a better defender. That's that's something we've talked about a lot. Um, I think he was a pretty good scorer last year. He got injured. That hurt his numbers, certainly. He was having a very good season, not a great season, and then he got hurt, um, and that really slowed him up. And it hurt with the hip. He had a hip injury to go along with the ankle issue. Um, as for the defensive part of it, 
he's not a laterally very, very quick guy. That's just part of it. So now we've got to fix kind of his positioning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, as a guy, I don't know if you're a great athlete. I, I can assume <laughs> you can just from looking chuckle, at you. That's uh, um, but that that's okay. Now mm -hmm. you've got to figure out, put yourself in the right position as a defender right. as well. Uh, and I think that's where he's got to figure it out as well. Sure. Actually, I think Spence was a pretty good athlete when he was younger. <laughs> and then... Uh, and then I got to college. Then I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay. He, he was fine. He was fine. Um, you've talked a lot, and I know you talked about it uh, this week in Chicago at Media Day, about what you learned uh, being in the NIT. Um, it, it's a good thing that you want it. Not a good thing that necessarily you're in it. You want to be in the, in the uh, NCAA. What, what did you learn from that, uh, and what kind of things can they take uh, this year into, into pushing to that next step? Yeah, I mean, I made the comment that nobody really knows how to handle it, and I agree with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, as a coach, a competitor, a player, you're not going to stick your chest out about that you won the NIT. Um, now, it was very, very difficult, and I appreciate it, I respect it, and I'm very proud of it, but we all know that's not your ultimate goal. I think more than anything, what I've really tried to do with these guys is narrow their focus as much as possible. There are certain things that cost us to lose 13 games last year, and we talk about those all the time. Well, there's also certain things that allowed us to win a school record 25 games. We talk about those things all the time. So I think more than anything, um, we played one of our best games of the season versus SMU. Mm -hmm. I was very proud of that part of it. Uh, now we go back and we look at some of the things we didn't do well, and we, now we just try to correct them. And we've seen teams make that run, and then the next year make a, make a big step. I think Baylor, I think mm -hmm. Wichita State, uh, Iowa was, a, was in that championship game the year before and made the tournament last year. Um, if all things go well and this team progresses, uh, is it your expectation to be in, in the big dance this uh, spring? Well, as a wise, wise veteran like yourself, you know I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> um, I would say that... Each team is different, too, by the way. Like, yeah. you know, if you'd lost five seniors, that may not uh, right. be as beneficial of winning the NIT. Um, I would expect us to improve on the things that we need to improve on. I'm not going to set a goal of we need to win the Big Ten. I'm not going to set a goal. We need to be in the NCAA tournament. That's not wise for any coach to do, in my opinion. Um, but what I do anticipate is we've got to be a better defensive team. We've got to be better with the basketball, taking care of turnovers, all those little things. Uh, become the best possible team we can. Uh, and I think we're moving in that direction. Coach, I love the relationship that you have with DeAndre Matthew. He sat here and told us that uh, that you don't yell at him as much anymore. Is, is that true, or have games just not started yet? <laughs> <laughs> Probably right? the latter. Uh, no, I don't, yeah, I don't really. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think I yell at our players a lot to begin with. I mean, I, you know, they obviously will disagree with that, but – I think more than anything with him and with a lot of those returners, are you getting the message? If you understand what the message is, we're all going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you know, as a player, I mean, you know what your coach wants, what he doesn't want. And when you make that mistake, as long as we have an understanding, like, you made a mistake, don't do it again. And I think DeAndre um, has a very good understanding of what I want and uh, how to execute it. But, you know, like, we know what we want to do going into a game. The execution part of it is really the most important thing. Sure. What'd you say, whammy? What'd you, what'd you want me to use for a slam dunk? I'm, I'll get you six Give or seven. I've listen. heard a couple of those. <laughs> the NBA jam on yeah. Sega. Yeah. Back to that. <laughs> hey, uh, good to see. I can't believe basketball's already oh. ready to roll, not too far away. And um, you're, uh, you're going to have that first game against your dad. You haven't been asked about that, have you? Many times, uh, yeah. I was wondering. Uh, yeah. Normally what happens with media, they say, we know you don't want to talk about it, but and right. then they ask the right. question. Yeah. So it's, right. uh, no, it'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's gotten our guys' attention early, which you don't normally do. Regardless of me or my dad, you don't normally play a top-10 team first game of the season. Yeah. So these guys are pretty focused early, which is nice to see. All right, very good. We want to thank Andre Hollins, Joey King, Maurice Walker, Elliot Elias, and DeAndre Matthew, and Richard Patino for Spencer Tollix. And I'm Mike Grimm, and this has been Media Day Live 2014.